Unearthly tales can unsettle us. While children's imaginations run wild with stories of ghosts and monsters, some adults say these creatures are real. In order to manifest, these things need energy. Could there really be an unknown primate living right among us? Tonight, let go of what you think you know. Once you go down the rabbit hole, don't stop. Even if it takes you to outer space. If the clock started ticking earlier, there were civilizations like us billions of years ago. What's out there? Who knows? Next on Chronicle. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. We begin at the Bellingham Public Library, where we meet Jeff Belanger, an author, podcaster, and TV host. He often reports on New England legends and the paranormal. People truly believe these myths and legends. It makes people uncomfortable. However, religion is also myths and legends as well, with profound supernatural implications. And so uh, it's not really a stretch if you believe in a god or a devil or multiple gods or reincarnation. It was a large house. Absolutely. Belanger covers everything from historic haunts to ghosts and UFOs. Do you believe in these kinds of stories yourself? Yes, I do believe a lot of these stories because they stick around. I have all the same struggles that you do with it, and yet people who are reliable folks have nothing to gain and everything to lose by sharing the story. It's a tough subject to talk about, but who doesn't love a good mystery? That mystery is Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch. This is no tall tale for Jonathan Wilk. He's a former park ranger and small business owner turned Bigfoot investigator. The earliest documentation that we can find in North America comes right from Massachusetts, 1765 from North Adams, Massachusetts. Wilk says Bigfoot has long been described as a shy, nocturnal, ape-like creature standing seven or eight feet tall. You have people not only just in New England, but all over North America and up into Canada that report the same type of creatures, bipedal, covered in hair, nomadic, and uh, elusive. Wilk runs Squatchachusetts, a chapter of the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, which tracks reports nationally. Over the past dozen years, Wilk says he has investigated 60 to 70 reports, most of them in Western Massachusetts. This is the thermal imaging camera. We also carry parabolic uh, microphones. The goal, evidence, of course. Is there a footprint? Is there a, a possible hair? The flexible foot is very unique to the Sasquatch and it leaves a unique print. This thing walked off and we had- Tim Vogel believes these footprints are from Bigfoot. In 2022, he and his brother Eric photographed and cast the prints in Savoy State Forest in the town of Florida. I said, look at this print. It's plain as day. And what about the sounds? Mostly here, Massachusetts is a whoop, like a gibbon type of a noise. And we don't have a lot of gibbons rub running around Massachusetts. This is no monkey business for believers, but a body has never been found. The most famous and often derided video was shot back in 1967 in California. Skeptics may scoff, but Matthew Moniz says Bigfoot should be taken seriously. There's never really been any collective unbiased studies of quote unquote the unexplained. It's the 800 pound gorilla in the room where they just go, well, never mind. David McCullough just hopes the watch for Squatch pans out. Just having a really good sighting, a clear class A sighting where I know all these years have been worth it. Seeing the dead can also be a hair raising experience. I know people who really want to have these experiences who don't, and I know people who could care less about these experiences and seem to have them. A famous ghost is said to reside here at the Providence Athenaeum. Open since 1836, the Athenaeum is a member-supported public library. Many illustrious figures have wandered these halls, including Boston-born writer and poet Edgar Allan Poe. Head of Research and Library Services, Stephanie Avoyan. We can kind of set the scene in the year 1848. 
A voyant says a widowed Poe was courting Sarah Helen Whitman, a well-known Providence-based poet. Poe was still looking for someone that he could marry and partner with. He was looking for a literary partnership. When Poe proposed, Whitman said yes, on the condition that he stopped drinking. He agreed, and the wedding was set for Christmas Day, 1848. Two days before that, while they were here at the Athenaeum, someone came in with a note for Whitman claiming to have seen Poe out drinking that morning and the night before. So she called off the wedding, and Poe left Providence that night on the 6 p.m. train. The two poets never saw each other again, and then Poe was dead within a year. Historians can only guess who gave Whitman the letter, says Avoyan. Her mom wasn't a great fan of Poe's. Rumors of Poe's ghost have been associated with the Athenaeum ever since. Instead of trying to push through it, give yourself a little bit of pause. Okay. Eliza Collins runs a wellness business specializing in burnout recovery. She also reads tarot cards. Recently, while doing readings in this room, she says she saw something. I thought that I saw somebody browsing the books and it looked like they were in maybe late 19th century dress and I looked up to say hello to them and there was no one there. Was it Poe? Who knows? I've heard claims that he might be here because it's one of the last places he was actually happy. I work in medicine during the day and I'm a very rational person but I like to think that this type of thing exists. It helps me believe in something bigger, and as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else in the process of doing that, I think it's a great option for people. And back to Bigfoot. The first question most people have about Bigfoot is this. What if the sightings were more of a familiar animal, like a bear with mange, which can appear human-like if it stands on its hind legs? The Squatch Achusetts team says no way. They've had rocks thrown at them and heard odd sounds that just don't add up. They also say that regardless of whether they ever find Bigfoot, it's always fun to get outdoors with some like-minded friends.